Hey everybody, welcome to my very empty room. Um, if you're wondering why I'm holding my headphones like this, it's because they're charging, as you can see, and uh, there's, the cord's just not long enough to wear on my head and charge at the same time. But I'm limited on time today, so I'm gonna make this video regardless. So just bear with me here. Um, this video is being made because I had a request to talk about machine learning and AI resources to learn the tricks of the trade, so to speak. So I put together a pretty short list and I just wanted to go through it with you and direct you to um, some resources where you can get started. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so the first one is gonna be free code camp. Uh, there's a section there that's for TensorFlow, and um, I am just finishing it up now. And although a lot of the concepts I already understood, I feel like it's still a really good resource to go through. Um, these courses here, like in this 32 by 32 uh, course here, is going to go through a lot of code and concepts and it can be kind of tedious to get through the videos sometimes but it's still a really good introduction to what it is that you're learning and um, it does come with some google collab notebooks here but i found it really difficult to find those notebooks to follow along with so most of the time you're just going to be watching 32 videos here the next portion of the course is how to how do neural networks work. And these aren't really about coding, but it's about the concepts of machine learning and like recurrent neural networks, long short term memory here, uh, deep learning. So this is where we're really getting into the AI sort of, sort of uh, territory. And then you have to finish with a few projects and you can see I've done three already and I'm gonna do these two over the weekend. Um, so, yeah, it's a really good, and then you get a little certification, and that's all well and good. And if you've never heard of Free Code Camp before, they have a ton of these different libraries and courses that you can take. Scientific computing with Python certification and data analysis would also be two um, courses that you might want to take before this one if you have no Python code experience. Next on the list is Data Camp. Um, data camp is a pretty cool resource here. Uh, I, I just logged in to my profile and you can see that there are these certifications here that you can register for data science associate, data science professional, analyst associate. Uh, that's all well and good. And you can learn um, R, you can learn all sorts of stuff, statistical experimental theory, exploratory analysis theory, uh, introduction to SQL, R, data science with Python, you can do daily practices. So these are really, really helpful. And I went through this to learn the bulk of my Python experience. So you might want to give a data camp a try. It is, you do have to pay for it. Um, I got it for, I got a year's worth for free um, because it just came with the boot camp that I was I applied to and was using, but um, it's a pretty good resources. It's like you fill in the blank. It, it'll give you like problems based on the course material that you're trying to learn or the topic you're trying to learn. And then you, it gives you like some code and then you have to fill in the blank. And that's sort of how you learn. So it's not the best way to learn coding, I think, but it's a good, it's you pretty much where you start when you start coding. So um, that might be another good resource. As far as YouTubers go, uh, Nicholas Renault, I think is how you spell it, say his name. I could be saying that totally wrong, but I freaking love this guy. He's he's awesome. Uh, I think he's got tons of great um, machine learning tutorials here and videos, and they range from 20 minutes to three hours. So I did one of I've done several of his videos, and actually I think this is probably the best way to follow along because he gives you the notebook and you can actually type what he's typing. And most of the time it'll work. I mean, he does, yeah, he's, he's great. He's awesome. I would definitely sub recommend subscribing to him, finding like a little video, like one of these to just follow along with. I mean, the, like, like you can even like use reinforcement learning to, to play Mario. So uh, definitely worth giving him a look at as well for, for some learning purposes. 
Um, the other one is UCI machine learning repository. This isn't so much for learning concepts or even learning how to code, but UCI machine learning repository is good for uh, getting lots of data. So for instance, you can, let's click on this heart disease. So you would just download the data folder. You could look at what the attributes are and you could look at, you know, the documentation for that attribute, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a pretty big one, it looks like. And then you can sort of just choose like what you want to try to predict. So you could try to predict, uh, you could try to predict, well, sometimes it'll tell you what you're trying to predict. That's great. So you can download this data and then work on your data science project. So this is a really good place to think about capstones or just data science projects in general, or if you're looking for data that you want to work with, this is an excellent place to go to and download the data for that. The other good thing about this is most of this, because it's like academic and it's readily available and a lot of people know about this site in the community, uh, there's usually a lot of notebooks on GitHub. So we could go to GitHub, type in heart disease data set, data science, filter by Jupyter Notebooks, and then we could go through other professionals who have worked with this data before and you can follow along. So it's a good way to like sort of get your own tutorial going by exploring different data and then exploring how other people approach the data with GitHub. Um, that's something that I did a lot to learn, just like the steps and learn just like how to write code and understanding like what blocks of code need to come next after, after you do certain things. So once you, once you start knowing how to code and you have an idea of like what the data science process is, like this is an excellent site to get data for your projects. Next one's Kaggle. Uh, you know, Kaggle is another place to get data sets. It's also a really good place to look at people's uh, code. So this is Carvana, predict car prices here. We can go look at the code. Let's look at, you know, uh, Kashul Krishna's code and you can read his through his notebook and see how he's achieving. I mean, this is a crazy heat map here, but you can, you can, you see how he's doing feature engineering. Uh, you can see, you know, how he's you know, finding unique names for the car companies and cleaning the data. And it looks like his heat map's getting a little better. I'm not sure what he's doing here, but and then here's splitting it. So this is another good way of going through code and finding how other people are approaching that code. I think that's maybe some of the best advice I can give when you're first starting out is find other people who know how to do the thing that you want to do, see how they're trying to see how they do it, and then just copy them. Um, I mean, you don't have to copy their code, but eventually all of this stuff will start to ingrain itself in your mind and you won't have to copy anymore. It'll just be sort of like you understand what needs to happen next based on what you've just done and what you need to you know, accomplish, right? So pretty cool. Kaggle is something, yeah, if you've been in the community at all, Kaggle is definitely one of those places where you're gonna be coming here a lot, probably. It's not my favorite place because, I don't know, it's like, it's so popular it, and the pub, the data sets aren't as, I don't know where people get like that Car Carvana data. Like, I don't know how someone got that Carvana data. Um, it could just be sort of like simulated, but you never know. Uh, you can find some really good stuff here though. And then lastly, if you're really serious about it and um, want to try to make a career out of it, I suggest taking a course or a boot camp um, and paying for one because like I, the, the most difficult thing about learning machine learning or AI is that you, there's a ton of information out there and you sometimes don't know like what are the best practices for, for doing the sort of work that you want to do. Um, meaning that like a bunch of amateurs use different, different terminologies for the same concepts or will even not understand a concept well enough, but explain it and then you get confused and it sets bad practices. So taking a boot camp to just like get someone who's an expert to create a curriculum for you um, is, is an excellent idea, especially if you're serious about learning the craft. So I took Springboard, I went through Springboard and it's gonna log me in here, but um, this is their homepage. You can take different 
you know, they have a machine learning engineering track. They have a data science track. Uh, they do UI. They just do software engineering. So they do a lot of stuff. Cybersecurity. Um, I was pretty happy with them. I've done other videos on my experience at Springboard. But um, another one that you can think about is uh, taking Andrew Nyo's uh, machine learning collection. He's a professor at Stanford. I think he's single-handedly one of the most influential machine learning educators out there. And he's got a lot of courses here, and I definitely want to take his machine learning course um, as well as a few of his deep learning course, especially um, to just get better at get better at it. I definitely am going to find the time and the money to to invest in this course later on in, in my journey here. So the and that sort of does it. So the, these are my resources here. I'm going to link this um, down in the description. I uh, hope that helps, and I'll uh, see you in the next video. Bye.